Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to this week's English Kutbah, and the topic is making the most of our time. Alhamdulillah. All praises are due to Allah, Lord of all the worlds. O oh Allah, for you is all praise. And we believe in you, O oh Allah, for you are our Lord. And we believe in your angels, your books, your messengers, the last day, and in destiny, both its good and apparent bad. I testify that there is nothing worthy of worship except Allah, the uniquely one, who has no partners in his oneness. We are content with Allah as our Lord, Islam as our religion, and I testify that our Sayyid Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the slave of Allah and his messenger, and we are content with him as our prophet. O oh Allah, send your peace and blessings upon him and upon whomsoever follows him in guidance until the last day. Amma ba'd, to continue. I advise you, O oh slaves of Allah and myself, with the taqwa of Allah. For verily Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu attaqu Allah wal tanzur nafsum ma qaddamat li ghad wa attaqu Allah inna Allah khabirun bima ta'amaloon O oh, you who have believed, fear Allah and, and let every soul look to what it has put forth for tomorrow and have taqwa of Allah for indeed Allah is acquainted with what you do. Ayyuhal Mu'minun, O believers. We know that there are 24 hours that make up a day. And there is no day that comes upon us in the limited number of days we have in this world, except it is as if the day says to us, I am a new day, so take heed, for I will be a witness to whatever you do in me. And indeed, when the sun sets, I will not return to you, except until the day of judgment wherein the form of deeds that you did therein will be displayed to you. Indeed, brothers and sisters, if we reflect on the potential admonition that such a day could say to us if it said those words, then we should also come to realize how quickly time passes us by. For if we look at our lives, especially those who are well into our middle age and beyond, then we'll see that the days, the months, and the years that have come to make up our lifespan, and indeed the duration of time that we've been on this earth, can seem almost like a small amount of time. And it's as if our lifetimes have passed by already, with what remaining being far less than what we've already spent. And if we come to realize this, then we should also come to realize that the time that we have in this world that will that we need to take advantage of is the perhaps the most precious commodity for time is that which will never come back except in the manner in which we invest ourselves in it and for this reason the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam urged us to invest and make the most of our time by utilizing it in the best of ways before we lose it. For in reality, time is the real Ra'as al-Mal, it's the real capital, that if unless a person invests in goodness, then he will come to regret. And this is why the Prophet wasallam said to a companion in a type of admonition, he said, اغتنم خمسن قبل خمسن. He said, make the most of five things before five other things. And amongst those things that he mentioned to make the most of from these five, he said, وَفَرَاغَكَ قَبْلَ شُغْلِكَ He said, your free time before your busy time, before you become busy. Brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala indicates to us the importance of time by the variegated and number of different ways that he swears by aspects of time in the Qur'an. So we'll find at different moments Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is swearing by the morning, the subh, the daybreak, the fajr, the day, the nahar, the, the night, the, the layl, and time itself, asr. And Allah says, wal asr. And so, when we reflect, for example, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَالضُّحَا وَاللَّيْلِ إِذَا سَجَى And by the morning brightness, and by the night when it covers itself with darkness. If we reflect on these verses, then we'll come to realize that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, aside from alluding to the importance of what comes after these oaths of, a, of 
of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swearing by time is also alluding to the importance of time itself. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never take an oath by something except that itself holds a degree of importance in the law with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so the realized human being, the human being who's come to value his humanity is someone who also gives importance to time and someone who makes the most of the time that is allotted to them in their day. One of the ways to do so is by distributing it in an efficient manner. This was the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam. He would come to allot his time in different ways, making sure everyone's rights are fulfilled. And of course, at the very forefront of allotment of such time should be the dedication to ibadah. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself has decreed that certain times are more appropriate for ibadah than other times. For example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّ الصَّلَاةَ كَانَتْ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ كِتَابًا مَوْقُوتًا Indeed, prayer is decreed upon the believers at specific times. There are speci specified times whereby it's been decreed that prayers have been decreed upon them. And so in similar manner, a person should set aside time to ensure that he performs his prayer on, on the right times. And he should ensure that his distractions of life do not entail that he's not able to fulfill his salah at the decreed times in the best and most appropriate manner of what the salah requires of us. Aside from this, apart from these times for ibadah and these times for worshipping and drawing nearer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a person should set time aside for his family and those of his kin, right? First and foremost of them being his parents. This entails that a person sit with them, spend time in their company, ask about their state, converse with them, and generally build about a state of contentment and uns, intimate companionship. And this is all under the verse when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, وَصَاحِبُهُمَا فِي الدُّنْيَا مَعْرُوفًا Company them both in this world with appropriate kindness, with beautiful kindness. And so from this Companionship is that we dedicate some time to being with our parents. Likewise, it's necessary that a person dedicate and spend time with his immediate family, being his spouse and his children. For he should represent for his wife a means of intimacy and be available for her needs, both physical and emotional. Likewise, he should be someone his spouse and children can turn to for comfort and aid. For his children, he should be a role model and should be a teacher. The Prophet ﷺ encompassed all of these things, and this is part of the reason why he said, خَيْرُكُمْ خَيْرُكُمْ لِأَهْلِ The best of you are the best of those to their family. Because why? وَأَنَا خَيْرٌ He was the best of those to, the, to his family. So he was the best of those in embodying what we're tasked to embody ourselves. And this is why a person should dedicate time with his family. But beyond that, we also have to dedicate or give some time to our broader relatives, Silatul Rahim, ensuring that we're maintaining good relations with our siblings, with our grandparents, with our different relatives that we have, but also those who are close to us in companionship, such as neighbors, friends, they all have aspects of rights upon us. And likewise, we have rights upon them in this companionship. And so we should value spending time in the company of people. But it also entails that we take good companionship because goodly companionship is like the Prophet ﷺ compared to the one who sells musk. And of course, badly compa bad companionship is like the blacksmith. So the idea being that whoever, so whoever we take as our companions, the effects of their character and goodness rubs off on, rubs off on us. And so we should seek to spend time in people who we value, who can help us draw nearer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This means that we should look for people to take as companions who are people of knowledge, people of spirituality, people of estates with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, people who have blessings and people who are who embody wisdom. Likewise, it's also good to um, to be have to have as friends and companions people who have certain skills and specializations and experience by which we can also attain unto knowledge and have such uh, experiences and benefit from them. One of the things to seek when we look for companions is to look at the level of their inward character. 
So if we find that we want to be more compassionate, then we should be with people who are compassionate. If we find that we want to be people of wisdom, then we should seek the company of the wise and so forth. As one of the scholars said, جالس الحكماء فإن مجالستهم غنيمة Be in the company of the wise, for indeed their gatherings are a bounty. Indeed, brothers and sisters, the best of ways that people can spend their time with other people is by ensuring that they adhere to doing their work in whatsoever they've been tasked to do. So, for example, most of us have to spend a portion of our time during the day at work in whatever professions Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us to do. And we should never underestimate the importance of this time that we're spending in our works. For as long as our professions are professions that are halal and are in the mubah, then we can make an intention for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala thereby to meet the needs of our families and to also ensure that we fulfill the obligations of our work in the best of ways. For our professions are premised on work agreements, whereby there is a trust that we perform certain duties of tasks in exchange for employment and income. And the believer is the one who fulfills his trust and is loyal to whatever is expected of him to undertake. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about the believers, وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ لِأَمَانَاتِهِمْ وَأَهْدِهِمْ رَاعُونَ And they, the believers, are those who with regards to their trust and their prom promises are always ra'un, always attentive, always ensuring that they're fulfilled. Similarly, a person should invest some hours of his day in expanding his understanding, increasing his knowledge, further developing himself. And this can be done by beneficial and purpose, purposeful reading, continuous learning, and fruitful contemplation. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us to contemplate. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَوَلَمْ يَتَفَكَّرُوا فِي أَنفُسِهِمْ مَا خَلَقَ اللَّهُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَمَا بَيْنَهُمَا إِلَّا بِالْحَقِّ Do they not contemplate within themselves? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not created the heavens and the earth and what is between them except in truth. So with all of this, brothers and sisters, if we were to dedicate and utilize our lives in the best of ways, then our lives would be full of achievements and righteousness and we in turn would be those who draw nearer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through hayat and tayyibah, through goodly lives. Somebody asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he said, Ya Rasulullah, man khayrun nas, O Messenger of Allah, which of the people is the best of people? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, man tala umruhu wa hasuna amaluhu. He said, he whose life is long and whose deeds are good. And in the opposite direction, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also said, the people who are the worst of people are the ones who have long lives, but their deeds are fully bad deeds. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they make us from the best of people. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he give us the ability to take advantage of our time and to always invest it and to utilize it in the best of ways with the intention of drawing nearer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask that he give us the ability to benefit ourselves and to benefit our communities and to bring blessings and goodness to our nations and the ummah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I say this and I seek forgiveness for myself and for you. So seek his forgiveness for indeed he is the most forgiving and the most merciful. And with that comes to an end of this week's English Qutbah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This Qutbah was brought to you by Idha'atul Quran Abu Dhabi.